Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is actually in the the source side of the book and taking a look at the how to implement the emotional side of things. So the plan is, is I actually have a scene from a story that I've been working on and it's just dialogue. Maybe a couple tags a little bit besides that but most of it's going to be dialogue. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at the book and we're going to take a look at their thoughts of how we can craft the scene and what we're going to do the goal here is is to actually change the scene and change the scene how it feels to the reader based purely off of the words and dialogue tags and everything that the book suggests this will help cement in our own writing and our own minds how we can use specific words and phrases to create a more robust scene but also a very specific scene and how things are actually going to play out so let's get into it so here's what I wrote up. As we can see, it's you know bare bones, not a lot here. Most of it's dialogue. Most of it's not giving us a whole lot of what the emotional feel is going to be. So we're going to go through, and I have a couple of themes, emotional themes that we're going to be playing with. Obviously, given what we're talking about here, it's going to be pretty clear what this scene will be lending to, emotionally speaking. All right, so defensiveness. All right, so... Defensiveness, resisting attack, defending against perceived danger or threat. Physical, stepping back, you know, how to back to increase distance between oneself and perceived danger. What we could do here is, so displayed on Steven's phone. He sat forward looking at the phone, eventually picking it up. All right, so what we've done is we've set up where we can use the second line, stepping back to increase distance between oneself and perceived dangers. These are physical signals. These are behaviors. Sometimes, a lot of the time, these are subconscious in what we do, licking one's lips. These are ways that our body reacts naturally to a perceived defensiveness. We have internal sensations that's talked about for defensiveness. Dry mouth, intense thirst, body feels hot, the stomach tightening and hardening. Now, these are internal sensations that we can add later on if we're in that person's point of view or if we're doing first person. These are really important for like first person. Mental responses, you know, stumbling thoughts to diffuse the situation, anger, shock, feeling of betrayal. These are different things. These are natural responses to the situation. Acute or long-term responses to this emotion. Flight response, you know, these are things that's if you're going through depending on whether it's a long-term event or it's a short-term event. These are going to have different things, different responses. Signs that this emotion is being suppressed. Maintaining an even tone, offering a fake smile. Now, each one of these have different things that they're looking at, different ways that these are things are expressed. So, you know, we have, generally speaking, you're going to have big physical signals and behaviors, internal sensations, mental responses, you know, signs of being suppressed. Sometimes you're going to have there's going to be similarities between each one you know then in addition they also have may escalate to defensiveness hurt guilt anger conflicted may de-escalate to shock vulnerability disillusionment this is a really good thing for this book if you're looking for a path for your character with these emotions this book provides it depressed mental responses associated power verbs ache for this is for desire ache aspire burn caress chase covet these are all very powerful words that are associated with desire, the idea of desire, despair. And I'm not going to go through all of these because um, it would take forever, but it's a really good idea to try to see what's going on and read these, read this book beforehand. So you have an idea beforehand, before you get to the scene, this is part of your pre-writing prep that you should be doing. You should be paying attention to, hey, if I'm looking for this scene or I'm looking for this thing, how do I give a desire effect? How do I create a desired effect in our readers? And these are going to do it. So let's go back to what we were talking about. Determination, defensiveness. All right. So we've set up a scene, with their character. He's, he's leaning forward, which is important because after we have him lean forward, we, we want to have him lean back. So, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create, he's subconsciously trying to create distance between himself and the perceived danger. Now, we're talking about a phone here. So, the person's not actually in the room. So, he's not physically trying to get away from the person, but rather, psychologically, he's trying to create that distance. He fell back into the couch. He's creating that distance. He's moving from a leaning forward position to a backward position. 
He's creating that distance. All right, let's move on. Liar, she responded, you always have your phone on you. Why are you avoiding my calls? Now, this could easily be taken, depending on how this is read, is she's angry. You know, so how do we lighten this up? How do we make it so? Because we don't, in this scene, we might not want her to actually be upset. We might not want her to actually be unhappy. So how do we, how do we, how do we create a, 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 a tell that she's not unhappy? Stephen could hear the smile in her voice. This automatically changes the scene. This changes her tone for our reader. Liar, she responded. He could hear the smile in her voice. That's a, that's a subconscious thing that we can pick up when we hear somebody smiling when they're talking. It's, it's pretty easy to pick out. You always have your phone on you. Here, it's a gentle ribbing that she's doing. She's saying, hey, I know you, you know, because I know you, why are you avoiding my call? She's really digging deep on this idea. So I'm not. Now, how do we change? How do we, how do we add another layer of him trying to avoid? This is a good one. Crossing arms over one's chest. I'm not, he said, crossing his arms. This is another layer of him being defensive. He's not, he's trying to create a sense that he's not being a, he's being defensive. He's not being defensive, but at the same time, he's trying to protect himself from this line of questioning from his mother or his stepmom. You know, we're creating a disjunction here. She sees herself as his mother. He's creating a, a barrier saying, no, you're not my mom. You're just my stepmom. He's creating by this tone here, he's creating a, a barrier himself in the words that he's using, you know, how do we, and you know, deflecting the blame. That's, that's kind of what this is. This is in a way deflecting blame, deflecting the truth of what they're trying to say. So stepmom, well, close enough. What's going on with Stacy? Here's the crux of the matter. Here's why he was kind of concerned because he didn't want to ask, be asked about Stacy. His, his response, how do we create another layer of there's a defensiveness. Now, granted, these are, we're going over the top here. These are, not something that you should be doing constantly, but rather this is how you should be doing maybe one or two throughout this whole conversation. By doing too much, we're, we're, we're overloading the reader. But what we're trying to do here is just say, hey, here's how we're doing this. this is here's how we're, we're implying that he's being defensive. The sweat on his brow began to gather. This, he's, she's trying to get the information about this girl, Stacy. But he's being defensive. He's changed tactics. He's changing how the conversation's going. And on one hand, it looks like he got away with it. But then she flips it back, says, quit stalling. What happened to Stacy? She, because she's his mother figure, she knows him well enough to know when he's trying to be defensive. And this is something that our characters should be knowing beforehand, particularly when we're talking about side characters who know how people are going to react. Now, as us, as readers, we are learning how this person's reacting to different stimuli. This is where it's really, really important for us to say, hey, this guy's going to be acting in this very specific way. We're creating a pattern. This is the start of our pattern of behavior for this character. This is a very mundane question that mothers and stepmoms and anybody who's a mother figure is going to care about the person that they love. They're going to have these questions and they're going to care about it, specifically when we're talking about relationships. And that's the thing here. And because we see here, they're no longer together. So this is something that he's been avoiding in the scenario. He, this is the one he's trying to avoid doing so he doesn't get pushed further. Now, there could be other reasons why he doesn't want to talk about this. But what, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a very specific scene in a very specific manner that he's going to be responding to this specific stimuli. All right. So how do we now what are internal sensations. Stephen's mouth felt like chalk. That is going back to the idea that internal dry mouth, intense thirst, that imac that response that we have when we're panicking. You know, body feels hot. These are different ways we could say the same thing. You know, this goes back to the sweat. His body feels hot, the sweating. This is a natural reaction. You know, maintaining an even tone. How do we, just because just like we could hear, just like he could hear her smiling, he could respond with, you know, with a fake smile, you know. Here, he's trying to create that everything's fine. He's trying to, again, create a barrier between what they want to know, which is what he doesn't want them to know, and what they, what she specifically wants to know. 
And because she's a good mother, she's going to push and she's going to find out and she's going to get the information she wants because she cares and loves her, her, her stepson or her son in her mind. So that's just one way we can use specific, specific defensiveness words. So we'll go back and we'll do another one. There's the table of contents. Okay. All right. So here we have all these different words that we can use. Some of these aren't going to work. Admiration doesn't work for this scene. Anger could. Defeat, yes. Defensiveness, yes. Fear, absolutely. Euphoria, no, not really. Guilt, yes, absolutely. By using something guilt, guilt words, what we're doing is we're implying that he did something stupid. He did something that was going to create problems in himself, in, in the scene. You know, now there's going to be similarities. Let's say with guilt, we have sweating. Sweating is another one of those emotional tells that have multiple elements that are applied to it. Keeping a distance, talking too much or too fast, you know, quivering chin. You know, these are things that that you kind of need to make sure you're paying attention to because what can end up happening is, is that you're creating a scene, but at the same time, it needs to be, there has to be enough detail where you're being consistent and what you're showing exactly what the issue is. By using the same thing, you can be, by using the same tells for each time and not having the same mindset of what you're trying to get out of it, that can create miscommunications between you and your reader. Mental responses, you know, filled with thought. These are things that we're not, we need to pay attention to beforehand. Love. Now, these are something else we can use. Lust, moodiness, remorse, how far penalty, asking to talk, shame, cheeks burn. These are all different ways that we can add to our story that we can do. So let's take a look at, let's do shame. All right, his cheeks burnt. You know, he's, he's feeling... He's feeling upset about the fact that he's lying to her. Eyes wet with tears. Put that here. Here's we're creating a scene where he's very emotionally sensitive. Now, this could be important part of the scene, though something you need to be aware of is, is that you don't want to create emotional catharsis too early. And tears is an emotional, can be an emotional catharsis. Problem is, is that if you use tears too much, it becomes very hard for you to have emotional weight later because that is a late game thing not an early game thing crampling into the sofa a chair pulling i'm not he said pulling his legs onto the couch he's creating he's trying to pull himself in he's creating that sense of shame by trying to make himself smaller vandalism of one's own thing self-punishment he said crumpling up a water bottle this is him destroying something that he has it's a way of having control of the situation by him destroying something of his own which is a water bottle now because it's a plastic water bottle because it's a something that's actually trash it's a low low stake destruction loss of interest in one's personal opinions this is a long-term thing this isn't something that you're just you're not going to see something short term like you don't see the signs of somebody giving up on their parents within five ten minutes this is a multi-day multi-month multi-year thing so this is just be careful when you're talking about something like this make sure that there's enough time for this tell to be seen seeking out second chances or to regain self-worth flu-like symptoms his stomach began to feel sour you know we're we're shut we're 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 implying that he's he's feeling his stomach is upset. You know, going back to that whole flu-like symptoms right here. Weak knees, thickness of throat, heat, tang tingling in the face, body tremors. You know, what happened to Stacy? Stephen's hand began to tremble. We're we're showing that shame. We're showing that emotional tell with her question. We're no longer together. Like I said earlier, make sure you're not overdoing these. I'm just going through this so you can see, hey, these are ways that you can add flavoring to your story. This is the way you can add flavoring to what you're trying to do. These aren't how this is actually going to end up. So this isn't something that I'm going to be using long term, but this helps us, both readers and writers, delve a little bit more deeply into what's going on. And a lot of the stuff we get through and we don't actually read and we actually don't connect with it on a cognitive level or a very conscious level but rather a lot of these things touch deeper parts of our subconscious our soul is a way of thinking about it you know denial you know we could have steven mentioned later how he was looking at you know a gun or he's looking at something that can cause self-harm later on these are all just different ways that we can say hey we're creating a scene and we're creating something that the reader can see, hey, this is what this person's feeling without actually telling them. These are all ways of showing. 
know, engaging with others, yet showing discomfort, avoiding contact, fidgeting. Fidgeting is an easy one. Stephen picked up the pen and began to flip it between his fingers. You know, these, this is him fidgeting. This is him having an impact on the world around him. But also at the same time, showing us, hey, this guy is having problems. This is a way of creating emotional tells so that the reader can understand what's going on. All right, everybody, that should be about it. I was hoping to go through more, but there's a lot of information to go through. So, you know, when you get a chance, check out the book. As always, I will be linking all the resources I used in the description below. Any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments. Until next time, bye. I am a poor wayfaring stranger. I'm traveling through this world of woe. Yet there's no sickness, toil, nor danger in that bright land to which I go.